Before we talk about the specific currents associated with the surface circulation, let's look at some general patterns. The surface circulation really centers around five major what are called subtropical gyres, and subtropical just means below the tropics, but what that really means is latitudes that are higher than or lower than, and I hate to use that term because it's so North American centric, the tropics, basically adjacent to, just north of, and just south of the tropics in the northern and southern hemispheres. That's what the word subtropical means. And gyres really just describe a circular motion of waters that form a continuous or sem semi-continuous loops. So we can break the surface circulation down into five major subtropical gyres and really two subpolar gyres. Subpolar having the same kind of meaning, just north of or just south of the polar latitudes. And, that, and we can also um, talk about the Antarctic circumpolar current as a current system and the Arctic Ocean current system. So we also, we could, if we went into finer details, we could recognize smaller gyres and current systems. But for our purposes here, this is what we're mostly concerned with. The five major subtropical gyres, the two subpolar gyres, the Antarctic circumpolar current system, the Arctic Ocean current system, and maybe a couple others. We also want to recognize that each major gyre, and we'll see this in an image in just a few minutes here, each major gyre is further, can be further sub subdivided into equatorial currents and boundary currents. We'll talk extensively about these in just a few minutes. If we take a look at an image from the book, figure 9.3, here's the five major subtropical gyres. The North Pacific Gyre, the South Pacific Gyre, the North Atlantic Gyre, the South Atlantic Gyre, and the South Indian Gyre. And you might be asking, where's the North Indian Gyre? Well, it just so happens that the continent of India kind of sticks down here in the Indian Ocean, really prevents that kind of continuous or semi-continuous circulation in the North Indian Ocean. And so we really don't recognize a North Indian Ocean Gyre. In fact, it turns out that the circulation in the North Indian Ocean is more driven by what are called monsoonal processes. It has a kind of monsoonal circulation where the currents actually reverse, reverse pattern, uh, re reverse direction seasonally because of heating and cooling over land, a subject we'll get into in just a few minutes. <clears throat> While we're here, let's look at a few general patterns associated with these gyres. The subtropical gyres in the Northern Hemisphere rotate in a anticyclonic direction or a clockwise direction. In the southern hemisphere, the subtropical gyres rotate in a anticyclonic direction as well or counterclockwise, counterclockwise, counterclockwise. Now for our purposes here again, as long as you recognize that the major subtropical gyres in the northern hemisphere rotate in a clockwise direction, that's fine, and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. I also want to call your attention again, though we did this very early on in the semester, into dividing up ocean basins into an east side and a west side. And it's not clear to me why students have trouble with this, though I think they just don't think about it or put two and two together. So pay attention here. If you're standing in the middle of the Pacific Ocean looking towards California, you are looking towards the east. And so this is called the eastern half of the Pacific Ocean. If you're looking in the other direction, you're looking towards the western half of the Pacific Ocean. It's really important that you are comfortable with and can quickly point out the eastern and western half of the Pacific Oceans. And again, I know it sounds simple, but I see that mistake made over and over again where students confuse the Eastern Pacific and the Western Pacific. And I'm not sure why. It might have to do with the fact that we live on a continent of North America, of course, and we live on the West Coast or the Western side of that continent. Again, if you split North America in two, this is the Eastern side of North America. You all know that. This is the Western side of North America for the continent. But I guess where people get mixed up is that we live on the West Coast on the Eastern Pacific Ocean. And it's that mixing of West and East, I guess, that confuses people. I, I really don't know why. So if 
somebody could explain to me why you confuse Eastern and Western Pacific Ocean, that would help me perhaps in explaining it better to people. We do the same thing in the Atlantic Ocean. This is the Eastern Atlantic. This is the Western Atlantic. Again, it's the Eastern side of the Atlantic Ocean, Western side of the Atlantic Ocean. And you can play that game, of course, on all the different gyres. Now, another reason why that's important is because we define the eastern, the currents that run along the eastern side of the major gyres, we define those as eastern boundary currents. This is the eastern boundary of the gyre. Okay, so eastern boundary current off the coast of California, eastern boundary current off of the west coast of South America, eastern boundary current off of Europe and North Africa, eastern boundary current off of South Africa, eastern boundary current off of West Australia. Okay, so we have eastern boundaries. And we want to talk about the eastern boundary currents because they have some very interesting properties, particularly as they relate to productivity in the world ocean. <clears throat> By the same token, we can define western boundary currents, currents that run along the western boundaries of the, of the oceanic gyres. Here we have a western boundary current in the North Pacific gyre that runs along Japan. Here we have a western boundary current that runs along the coast, the east coast of, of the United States and Canada as well. And here we have an eastern boundary current running along the east coast of South America. Eastern bound, western, excuse me, western boundary current, western boundary current along the east coast of Australia and western boundary current over the east coast of South America. So you should be able to look at a map like this, pick out the eastern and western halves, eastern and western Pacific, eastern and western Atlantic, eastern and western Indian Ocean. You should also be able to pick out eastern boundary currents and western boundary currents. Those are going to be really important distinctions because those major features are really sort of ways of defining the kinds of physical properties it will have in a particular region of the ocean, particularly with regards to circulation and even productivity.